Get the dispensary, I need me a big bag of that shake. I came a long way, still got so far to go. I've been through the darkest roads, took us through some episodes, left us on the cliffhanger. One up in the chamber, my low barking, now I'm sissy danger. I'm what up, dog? True crew, what it do, my baby? What's up with my squad? Hey, Charlie Red 989 coming through one more time. I have me on your socials, bro. I have me on your socials. Hey, I just dropped a new song called Rocket Man Freestyle. And I was really, you know what I'm saying? Pouring my heart out on that song, bro. I was really talking that talk. I think y'all should go check it out. It's on the page. And check out our True Crew podcast. We drop every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 o'clock. And we also doing TV show reviews. On different days, we ain't got the schedule set up quite right for that yet, but y'all make sure y'all stick in and tune in to the channel and stay locked in to the guys, man, because we're going up. We're getting, we getting 20K we getting 20K subscribers this year. 20K. Yeah, we're getting 20K, 20K subscribers this year. Oh, my mom, watch. Watch, trust me. But uh, today, right now, at the moment, like and subscribe if you're feeling the vibes. We about to get in the Inglewood family versus L.A. Why everybody hate Inglewood? This is a Swamp Stories video. Y'all ready? Let's get it. Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we head back to California. Okay, 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 I know, this is the absolute last one. I promise, I want to cover the East Coast and the South for the rest of the year. But nonetheless... <laughs> they must have been getting, his, getting on his ass in the comment section like, bro, we get it. You know a lot about LA gangs, bro. But I'll be liking this shit, you feel me? But let's get it. Yes, this one is pretty interesting, so let's just go ahead and enjoy it. This is a story of broken friendship and how the city of Inglewood became enemy number one. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. Uh, uh, uh. All up in the uh, 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 all up in the spot. Uh. In the spot, got guap, and your bitch give me top. I just swear I want the bop, bop, bop. Come through, my niggas rocking all my blue. most dangerous cities list. I mentioned that Inglewood is one of the safest cities in America and has been for a little while. Of course, this did I not please the people from Inglewood, which is always a backwards train of thought. But it's actually true. When you roll around Inglewood, you don't sense danger or even poverty. It almost feels like any suburban city, especially if you're coming from South Central. But Cali trick like that that should be looking pretty you get your motherfucking noodle flipped over there playing around and one of them next to a palm tree next to a pretty ass palm tree you'll be sitting there noodleless you feel me oh hey hey the the fuck around don't discriminate around you know what I'm but one thing that's important to note is that Inglewood is a changed city nothing like it once was. In fact, we're not too far removed from one of the worst rivalries in Southern California history. But wait, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We take a time machine way back to the 1970s. For those who don't know, Inglewood was built as a suburb of Los Angeles. It was designed for middle class families who wanted to stay away from the madness of LA. However, it is located right next door. Regardless, it's always had its own separate identity. Unlike suburbs of Atlanta who are going to claim they're from Atlanta, Inglewood is just going to claim Inglewood. That's because it's extremely prideful. Let me explain the history. In 1960, Inglewood had a grand total of 29 African American residents. That's because most of the city- Oh, you know they was giving them hell around there. Hey, nigga! You know what I'm saying? They had to hear the N-word a lot. Only 29 of them, yeah. He was exclusive to non-African Americans, and that was by law. Well, in 1965, the ruling was struck down and Inglewood was now available to everyone. However, there was still a major issue. Banks would only provide loans for African Americans to stay on the east side, not the west. Essentially, start... And that's called redlining, right? Uh, in 1965, a bunch of South Central families moved to the east side of Inglewood. They thought that this would be an escape, but it actually wasn't. Their kids were sent to underfunded schools, jobs were not hiring, and you know the rest. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. You see how they be doing this, guy? That's crazy, man. Long story short, the east side of Inglewood started getting rough. A lot of young men see... 
my powers. Damn it. Not a gift, but a curse. Damn, Black Adam. Seek Black ways Adam. to make quick money, and in the process, a large gang formed on the east side. This would be known as the Chain Gang. They had two territories, the first being from Manchester down to Century Boulevard, and the second being the large Morningside Park neighborhood. The reason they formed is because of South Central members who would come over to Inglewood thinking it's sweet. Specifically, Tookie Williams' West Side Crips were notorious for this. So in response, the Chain Gang muscled up. Despite being in a different... You had a big-ass Tucky Williams, Tucky Williams coming around your block. You gonna start hitting weights, too. You be like, shit, this nigga ain't about to be sleeping me out here. Hell no. Nah. You like, give, I'm about to get big, and, and I'm gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> I'm about to train. I'm about to fuck these niggas up. Let's go. Different city, the chain gang's territory was <coughs> right across from their bitter rival. And the theme of the 1970s was Inglewood's chain gang versus South Central's West Side Crips. Well, fast forward to the 1980s and a major name change took place on both sides. As they expanded to larger territory in Inglewood and membership grew to 700, they wanted a new identity. Now known as the Inglewood family. It sounded better and most importantly it showed that they were a family after all. And by this time, Inglewood was no longer South Central soft suburban cousin. Inglewood family was real factors in LA. This came with a heavy price. Of course, their next door neighbors were the infamous 8 Trey gangsters. Starting in the mid 1970s, the two sides began bumping heads. For a year and some change, scuffles occurred between the two sides. But each of them were preoccupied with other beefs in the region. However, on July 24, 1977, that would all change. It's a blazing hot summer day and everyone is outside. For Inglewood family, they happen to be at Centinella Park. This is where they tend to hang out on nice days and have barbecues. Well, the night before at a party, A. Trey and Inglewood family got into it once again. And this time, A. Trey wanted to send a message. So a group of four members get in the car and head over to Centinella Park. They get out of the car and approach a small group of Inglewood members. The two groups start fighting and that's when an A. Trey member takes it to another level. Sadly, the leader of the Englewood family would not make it. Unfortunately, the A-Tray members would head back to Centinella Park the next day. But this time, the Englewood family members were ready. The story goes that two A-Tray members passed away. Mm. From here on, the A-Tray versus Englewood family rivalry would be one of the worst in Los Angeles history. Because they border each other, life became extremely difficult on both sides. But not only did they rival A-Tray, they also became bitter rivals with the infamous rolling 60s. This would end up being one of their worst rivalries, to the point where anyone wearing the wrong color could be a target. In the 2000s, Inglewood family became notorious for random incidents, and this made them the most hated by far. Everyone knew that they were liable to do anything to anyone. They didn't care if you were affiliated or not. Inglewood family was known to ask questions after. November 18th... So them was the grimy niggas, huh? It Inglewood to go, oh, he don't give a fuck, where he from? He say he ain't from here, he's cuz from Texas. <laughs> fuck it, get on his ass. Dude, dude, what, nigga, what? Alright. 2007. A man named Robert Jones is cruising down Crenshaw Boulevard with three friends in a Chevy Tahoe. Jones and his friends are not members, but they have some associations with the Rolling Sixties. Well, Jones pulls over to the CVS on the corner of Crenshaw and Coliseum. Forever, this has been known as a Rolling Sixties hangout spot where things go down on the regular. Just like any day, Jones heads into the CVS while his friends stay in the car. As he heads for the entrance, he notices a black Hummer parked out front. And from the car, two men hop out and approach Jones. They ask him, where are you from? To which he replies, nowhere. Then they ask, are you Rolling Sixties? To which he replies, no. One of the men named Kevin Thompson does not believe him. Kevin then where do we go from here? <laughs> I told I told you I'm not from nowhere. And you know, I don't believe him. See, you, the problem is all these fake ass gangbangers will be going on out here claiming everything, banging everything, and then when they by themselves, they be on some whole shit. No, stop doing that because you fucking it up for the regular niggas that's not on that. So now he, now I don't know what's about to happen to this man. Cause he just told him, I'm not from over there. I ain't with nothing. And, and, and dog don't believe him. So, I don't know. We're going to see. 
It happens to be an Inglewood family member looking to gain a reputation. Kevin makes a horrible decision. What do you do? Damn. Later that night, Kevin Thompson would be pulled over in the same black Hummer. The friends of Robert Jones would testify against Kevin Thompson, and now he's currently doing life. Damn. Again, this is another example of why everyone grew to dislike the Englewood family. However, they did have a couple of close bonds. First, you have the Crenshaw Mafia, who boarded them at multiple... I think them niggas look hella hard on boys in the hood. You know what I'm saying? They got, a, they got much rep on boys in the hood, I ain't gonna lie. Multiple locations. Since the start, this has definitely been their closest ally. Next, you have the infamous Mad Swans, located on the east side of South Central. And finally, in Never heard of the Mad Swans. You would think a nigga would pick something else, but... You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Mad Swans. They ain't got no smoke with y'all. You know I mean? None. Englewood family was allied with the Denver Lane, located all the way below the Hoovers. Their territory stretches from 104th to 120th in South Central. For decades, the two sections were best friends and they rolled together against their common rivals. However, everything would change in 2013. February 9th, 2013. It's a Saturday night and Englewood family and Denver Lanes meet up at the Normandy Casino. There, after a couple hours of drinks and fun, an argument takes place. Allegedly, an Inglewood member gets into it with a Denver Lane named Trayvonny Odom. The argument gets disrespectful, and both sides head their separate ways from the casino. This does not mean it's over, as Inglewood members head over to the Denver Lane's area four hours later. They spin around the area until they locate Trayvonny on the corner of 110th and Denver Ave. And without hesitation, bam. Damn. This moment changed everything. The 30-some years of alliance and friendship down the drain. All of the good times together now mean absolutely nothing. This is yet another example of why everyone despise- A couple knuckleheads, a couple knuckleheads will mess up a good thing for everybody, bro. It'd be so unnecessary. So unnecessary. This is the Englewood family. And the Denver Lanes felt this exact way. So three days later, they would seek revenge in a major way. Because they were allied for so long, everyone knew where each other lived. And on February 12th, the Denver Lanes wanted to prove a message. Beefing with, your, beefing with the homies is... Man, that get messy, bro. Everybody know where everybody stay. What's that Gucci lyric? I know all your cribs. I know all your spots. Hold up. Now there's some, some, and find some shots. Something like that, nigga. Beefing with people you know is crazy. That shit is crazy. That's another level. At this point, the Englewood families were led by a man named Clarence Gant Sr., also known as Big Clayron. At this point, he was 46 years old, meaning he was triple OG status. So this is who the Denver Lanes wanted. He resided in Compton's Willowbrook neighborhood, and this is where they located him. On the afternoon of February 12th, Big Clayron passed away. Now the rivalry was official. In the span of three days, a member on each side was gone. And from here, it would only get worse. In the next week, three more unidentified members would pass away. The former friends were now at each other's necks on a daily basis. And this prompted a rapper named Inglewood Monster to release a song called Supposed to be Bloods. On the song, Monster talks about how he doesn't condone the beef between the two sides and how they need to come together. And this begs a good question. Is there a point where beef is not recoverable. If both Hell sides yeah. have lost beloved, I am feeling something. Hell yeah, it's a point where beef is not recoverable. You killed my brother, it's up for life. You killed me, stop it. Song was an attempt to do so, and it included features from Damu rapper June Dog, Avenue Pyru member, vid members. How can they throw the white flag? What together. And this begs a good question. Is there a point where beef is not recoverable? If both sides have lost beloved members, how can they throw the white flag? Well, this song was an attempt to do so. And it included features from Damu rapper June Dog, Avenue Pyru member Redrum781, and Brim's member G Nut. The hope was to end all of the red on red rivalries in LA, but this was kind of a tough task. Because at this point, everyone hated the Englewood family, except for a couple sections in Inglewood and the Stink Team. Yes, you heard that. I ain't gonna lie, it's a hood like that. I feel like it's a hood like that 
in every city. You know what I'm saying? Every every city is the hood where them niggas grind. You know what I'm saying? Do not trust them niggas. Don't let none of them niggas in your house. You know what I'm saying? I think every city got that. Come on. That correctly, Draco the Ruler and the Stink Team were allied with the Englewood family. They were often seen together and Englewood rapper Scheme was featured on Draco's early tapes. In mm. fact, in June of 2016, Draco the Ruler and Englewood rapper Ruchi collaborated on a song. Together, everyone was going up, but then in typical Englewood fashion, it would all fall apart. It started <laughs> off with the infamous December 11th, 2016 incident. This is when the Stink Team allegedly claimed the life of Englewood family's day beyond Gregory. For years, Draco the Ruler fought this case in trial, which he eventually beat after two times. To this day, no one knows why this incident occurred or why the beef started. But now, after losing a top member, the Inglewood family cut off their old friends. Now, the Stink Team was added to their long list of rivals. During the years that Draco was locked up, some Inglewood rappers would make some noise. Ruchi would drop hit songs like Light It Up and Functions in the Hood. These would solidify him as a staple in LA rap. After him, a rapper named AZ Chike would drop some hit songs as well. The controversy around his name is that he joined the set at 25. In the LA street world, this is seen as extremely corny. And this is something that Draco the Ruler used to diss Englewood family. AZ Chike would respond to Draco with a song called Lil Stink Stink, which prompted Draco the Ruler to drop the infamous Engleweird. In the song, he referred to Engle- That Engleweird started some shit, didn't it? Wood as the suburbs, and that brings me to my next topic. Today, Inglewood itself is no longer the Draco the Ruler to drop the infamous Engleweird. In the song, he referred to Inglewood as the suburbs, and that brings me to my next topic. Today, Inglewood itself is no longer dangerous, like not even remotely dangerous. And of course, this is an amazing thing. However, it has come with a cost. Let me explain. Inglewood is massively gentrified, especially with the construction of SoFi Stadium. And with this, rent prices have shot through the roof. Yeah, On they, top of this, many we can't afford to be out there. They, okay, I get it. Old apartments have been torn down and rebuilt as luxury condos. Popular Englewood family rapper Ruchi grew up at 722 West Beach Avenue. This is what it looked like two years ago, and here's what it looks like now. I'm not saying this is a good or bad thing, but Inglewood is starting not to feel like Inglewood anymore. So if you didn't appreciate what I said on the most dangerous cities list, this episode was for you. But this is not where the story ends. The Inglewood family has spread to two cities in a major way. First, St. Louis, Missouri, but more importantly, Atlanta, Georgia. In fact, Inglewood family is arguably the most powerful section in East Atlanta. They have multiple large indictments, which I can cover in separate episodes. But that's going to do it for this one. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Who the hell knew, bro? That's crazy. So Inglewood family just stretched out to St. Louis and Atlanta. And they, they putting pressure down there. They putting pressure down it. Okay. I never knew. Hey, bro. If y'all enjoyed that video, let me know y'all enjoyed that video. If y'all want me to do more of these, let me know that. If you got something else for me to react to, let me know that. Y'all go through the channel, click on everything. You click on find something you like. You feel me? Find something you like. Till the next time, bro. Y'all be smooth, man. Stay out the way. We out.